Hi there, I'm Ludwig and this is SQL Bootcamp Online, the two-minute SQL series where I am addressing the most common issues and questions regarding SQL Server and Azure. Now, in a previous video on this YouTube channel that I hope that you're subscribing and you've already went through those videos as well, we addressed the question on the difference between SQL login and database username, that this was only the theory and I draw it all out for you to explain that difference. But right now, there is a time for the live code. I want to show you how to create that login and how to map that login to the username in that database. So let's get straight to it. Now here, as you can see right now, I do have my little, uh, little uh, screen share where I am being logged in as student. Now student does have the uh, full admin privileges, so I will be able to perform all of my work. Now you can see that on this uh, SQL Server in here, I do have the security tab and I do have a security folder and a databases folder. Now I have quite a few of those databases like DQS, MDS and Semantics DB, it really doesn't matter. I will create a brand new database real quick as a test database just to prove the point. So I'll call it the SQL Bootcamp uh, DB, just like that. I will hit OK and that's it. As you can see, there is a database. It doesn't have any kind of uh, tables in it. It's absolutely uh, empty at this um, at this stage. So what I want to do right now is I want to go to my security and see whether I have what kind of logins I have. As you can see, there is again quite a few of those. What I want to do is I want to start and create brand new one. So I'll go to the new login right now. And as you can see, since we already this, uh, explained the SQL Server authentication, so again, go ahead, subscribe, find that video if you're not 100% sure what's the difference between the Windows authentication and the SQL authentication here. But what I want to do right now is I don't want to relay on Active Directory. I don't want to relay on the local Windows users on the system. I want to create a SQL Server authenticated login. So I'll just call this um, person, for example, John Smith. All right. So John Smith will have some kind of a password. And password again. Boom. And I don't want to enforce password policy. I don't want to ex uh, enforce any kind of complexity. I don't want to, this password to expire. And I definitely don't want this user to change this password the moment they log in for the first time. So as you can see, I didn't do anything in here, right? So nothing at all. I'll just hit OK. All right, before I do that, I'll just script this action to the new query window so you will see what happened in the background. Boom, you can see that I've created a login called John Smith with the password, the default password uh, for all of our MCT work and the Default database is master. We already explained what are the system databases uh, on this YouTube channel. So go ahead and check that video. It does not expire. It does not check any mm, complexity and password policies. So this is my code in here. Now on my logins catalog, you can see that John Smith was created. Now what I'll do is I'll open my SSMS again on a separate window and I want to log in using this SQL, um, SQL Server authenticated login. So John Smith with the password, same one, I'll just hit connect and boom, as you can see, I'm being let into this SQL Server. Now, if I expand the databases, yeah, I can see all of the databases, but it's not there. As you may remember from our previous video, when I was telling you about those differences between usernames and the logins and where we want to have the usernames in each uh, of the databases separately. So one user will, one login will not have access to everything with the highest level of privileges. What we want to do is we want to create a user right now for that particular person. So what I'll do is I'll just find a database that I want uh, this user to have access to. And boom, as you can see, unfortunately, the database SQL Bootcamp DB is not accessible for that user. So how do I fix that? Well, I need to uh, go back to my 
to my admin account, right? And as an admin account, I need to go to my databases. I need to find a database that I want to create a user in. So right now you can see that I do have the security folder in here as well, right? So there are two different security folders in here. This one, applies to the entire instance of my SQL Server, while this one in here applies only to this database. And every single one of the other databases, they also have the separate security folders in here, right? So what I want to do is I want to go to the security folder in that database, under that database, expand it, and you can see that as in my security on the server level, I had logins. On In the security folder on the database level, I have users. That's exactly, well, not like this, sorry, you were not seeing that. Here it goes. Uh, that's exactly what we have explained in here, right? We have user on the database level and we have login on the server level. So I need to expand those users. As, as you can see, I have just DBO, guests, and system information schema. What I want to do is I want to create a new user. Now you can see that this will be by default a SQL user with login. So I will be able to log in to that username. My username will be again, John Smith. And the login, I can choose it from the list of available logins. Boom. And I can find the John Smith in here. Hit OK. Hit OK. The default schema, I don't know what the schemas are because I haven't watched the proper video on SQL Bootcamp Online just yet. So what I'll do is, again, I'll just script it to the new query window so we'll see what happened in the background. I'll hit OK to apply those changes. And this is the code that I was looking for. Using SQL Bootcamp Online, I want to create a user called John Smith for the login that's also John Smith. Now, since I do see John Smith in here, if I'll reconnect to this SSMS where I see where I'm logged in as indeed John Smith, well, how do I know that? Well, at the very top of your Object Explorer, you always see the name of the U of the login that is being logged in here. Now, what I want to do is I want to try again and expand the MDS database. Did I create the username the MDS database? No, I didn't, so it's not accessible. Did I create this uh, username in the DQS main? No, I didn't, so it's not accessible. Again, this is exactly what it, we said in here. User is logged in, but they do not have access to any of the databases other than the one that I've just cr uh, created a user in, right? So what I'll do right now is I'll just try and expand my SQL Bootcamp online and voila, as you can see, I can access this database, I can um, start using this database. Now, what kind of privileges I can have, what kind of roles I'm a member of, this is a completely different story. And this is a subject for another episode of the two minute SQL uh, on the SQL Bootcamp YouTube channel. I'm Ludwig. Thank you very much. This was the episode on the difference between login and user, the live coding demo, and I'll see you in the next one.